system by elimination and again you remember I've told you you can solve them any way you want. I did use elimination on that one. Looking at the um, equations there I made both of my x's be 4x's so I'm going to go ahead and write what I got when I multiply that first one by 4. It got me 4x minus 16y equals negative 16. I multiply the top equation by 4 there. Then the bottom one I got negative 4x minus 3y equals negative 3. So now my 4x's are different signs, so I'm adding 4x to negative 4x is nothing. Negative 16y plus negative 3y is negative 19y, and negative 16 plus negative 3 is negative 19. So when you divide it by negative 19 to solve for y, your y was 1. Now there were a lot of questions on here where I didn't even go and plug it back in. If I look through the choices, there's only one choice that has a y of 1. So it had to be C on that. And yeah, I know I'm supposed to plug it back in, but you can save yourself a little time when it's a multiple choice and they don't have multiple ones in there. All right, on number two, had lots of questions on what those words meant on choice B and D. Inconsistent is a no solution. They gave you that little symbol there beside it. And then dependent means infinite many solutions on D. When you type that into your calculator to do a matrix, if it's either one of those, no solution or infinite solutions, either one of those it tells you an error. And then you got to go and figure out why it's an error, which one of those two it is. Okay, so if it's, if it's infinite solutions, if it's D, you'll end up having the same line twice. Like, for example, if I, or those are intersection of planes, but if I looked at choice... Uh, which one was it? The first two lines. Look at the first two equations. X minus Y plus 5Z equals negative 13. And then the other one, the second one was negative 4X plus 4Y minus 20Z equals negative 2. Okay, I can make this top one almost be the bottom one. Look what would happen if I multiply this top one by negative 4. Negative 4x, same thing. Negative 4 times negative y is positive 4y, same thing. Negative 4 times 5z is a negative 20z, same thing. So on the left side of the equal sign, those two are the same equations, right? But negative 4 times 13 is not negative 2. So that one little piece that was not the same made those not be the same line. If it had been, if I'd ended up with all pieces the same and it was the same line, it would be infinite or dependent. But since not, that's no solution. Okay, see how you'll have to check for that if you get an error on your calculator, you have to go and look and see which one it is. Okay, we ready? I actually did it by hand. So you could still do it by hand. Does anybody want me to do that? Elimination on it? Okay, guess one. Alright, number three. I got negative one zero, easy subtraction one here. Six one. We're subtracting negative one six and three one. Alright, so all we got to do is subtract corresponding spots. Negative 1 minus negative 1 is 0. So I immediately know it's got to be either A or B. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. Oh. It's got to be A, yep. Okay, got another systems on four. Uh, one thing that I saw people make an error on in sixth period yesterday is on that second equation, they forgot to put a zero in the Z spot. You plug that in your calculator, that second equation, X plus 2Y 
needs to have a zero Z. But I'm looking at those there. Let's see. Let's compare. Let's just compare them all so you can. I, I don't know if you still if you understood that in the last one. The first equation to the second equation. All right, so you did it in a matrix on your calculator and it told you error. So now you're checking to see is it because it's infinite or is it because it's no solution? All right, are these two the same line? Like, look at the, let's say I could make these both be a 2y. I'd have to multiply it all by 2, but then they wouldn't be the same x's anymore. They're not going to be the same z's. So those are not the same line, right? Okay, let's compare the second one to the third one. You write the third one underneath it. 2x plus y plus 8z equals negative 80. All right, if I multiply the second one here by 2 to make that a 2x, that's the same. But then that would be a 4y. That's not the same. My z's are not the same. So the second and third one are not the same. What about the first and third one? If I wanted to make that be a 2x and multiply that whole thing by 2, be 2x, but that'd be minus 2y. This is not minus 2y. So none of those equations are the same, are they? So that would be no solution. So if it tells you error, that's what you got to check for. Are they the same lines or not? No solution or infinite solution. Number five, the graphs of two linear functions, bless you, f and g, are neither parallel nor coincident. So how many intersections do they have? So they're not parallel, which means parallel will be no solution. Coincident means the same line, so they're not infinite many solutions. So if we're not parallel and we're not infinite, we have to intersect one time. So that would be C, one solution. D is a funny one on there. Lines can't intersect two times. They'd have to bend somewhere and lines don't bend. All right, number six. Everybody okay? 3x plus 5y equals negative 10 and 2x plus 4y equals negative 6. My personal preference when it's two equations and two variables, I usually go ahead and solve it by hand. I looked at my x's, 3 and 2, I can make those both 6's. My y's, 5 and 4's, I can make them both 20. So I went with the x's of 6. So I multiplied this first equation by 2. So that got me 6x plus 10y equals negative 20. And multiply the bottom one down here by 3. That got me 6x plus 12y Bless you. It equals negative 18. My 6x's are different, or excuse me, dummy, they're same sign, so I'm subtracting. 6x minus 6x is nothing. 10y minus 12y is negative 2y. Negative 20 minus negative 18 is also negative 2. So we got a y of 1. Uh, only one choice has that. It's got a big beat. Next page. Bless you. You're allergic to Shelby. There's Shelby sitting beside her. Oh. That'd be a long draft to be all the way allergic to me. Alright, number seven, I did the same thing on. I got 11x plus 3y equals 1. And 5x plus 2y equals 4. Uh, I made them both be my y's. I made my y's be 6's. So I multiplied this top thing here by 2. I got me 22x plus 6y equals 2. I had to multiply the bottom one by 3. That got me 15x plus 6y equals 12. So my 6y's are same signs, which means I get to subtract. 22x minus 15x is 7x. 6y minus 6y is nothing. 2 minus 12 is negative 10. 
little panic because I see a fraction happening, but I look at the choices and feel better because they're all fractions. X is negative 10 sevenths. Only one of them's got that. B. -b 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 -b. All right, eight says solve by graphing. You can if you want to. I did not. It's already ready for elimination as smooth as can be. X minus Y equals 2. X plus Y equals 8. You just got to decide right here if you like subtraction or addition better because you can do either one of them. I like addition, so I added. See, my Y's have different signs, so I added. I could have subtracted and got rid of X's. You can do either one. X and X is 2X. Negative Y and Y is nothing. 2 and 8 is 10. So X is 5. Only one of them has that choice. The choices? Yeah. You already said that, right? Yesterday, not today. I was going to say, did you check that? What Louise is talking about is remember when you've got a multiple choice test, you've got the correct answer. So if all else fails, you don't know what else to do, you can plug the choices into the equation and see if it satisfies it. It's going to make them both true. All right, number nine, uh, six period yesterday, nobody remembered how to do determinant. So I'm going to show you the steps that you got to type in on your calculator to get determinant. First, got to hit second. And then if you go to that inverse key there, that has matrix on the second. So you got to pick that, and you got a cursor over at the top to math. And then the very, after you move it over to math, the very first thing says determinant with a parenthesis. So choose that. Now it'll be on your home screen, and it'll say determinant with the parentheses. Then you would have to hit alpha, zoom, and go enter the 3 by 3 matrix. Okay, did y'all remember that? Yes. What did you get? Uh, D is correct, 175. Everybody remembered how to get a matrix in, but they didn't remember how to find how to, where determinant was. So make sure y'all remember that better than six period did. They doing all right? Sorry, was that D? That was, yes, D, 175. Okay. Thank you. All right, 10. I used my uh, calculator to do it. So I had to set up a 3 by 3 matrix. The first row had a 1, a negative 1, and a 3. The second row had a 2, a 0, and a 1. Don't forget if it's missing an X, Y, or Z, you got to put a 0 in the right spot. And then the third one had a 1, a 2, and a 1. Took the inverse of that matrix. And then I put my answer matrix in a 3 by 1, negative 2, 0, and 4. Hit enter, and I got 0, 2, 0. X, Y, Z. Did y'all get that one? Anybody wants me to do it by hand, I can. All right, we, uh, only time we talked about inverses when we were using matrices is when we did that. So then on question 11, it says determine whether the, they're inverses of each other. So all I did when I worked that is I took that first matrix, 10, 1, negative 1, 0, and I did the inverse of it to see if it equaled the one they told me. And so I put the first one they gave me, did the inverse, and then checks to see if it's going to equal what they told me it should or not. Did that one equal that? No, Louise is correct. It didn't. Next page. I did the same thing on number 12. Were those inverses on number 12? No, they were not. Good job. They tried to trick you by switching the no or the yes on that one, so make sure you pick, choose wisely. All right, 13 I did. It says use Kramer's rule. 
I don't know about Kramer except he was on Seinfeld, so I didn't use his rule. I um, put that in the matrix in my calculator. I got a 3, a negative 4, a negative 1. And I had a 1, a 6, and a negative 5. And then I had an 8, a 1, and a 1. Inverse of that times the answer one, which is negative 22. 6 and 18. And the grand finale gave me 1, 5, 5. Alright, 14 says solve the system by using the inverse of the coefficient matrix. That's the fancy words for what I just did on that one. When you put it in a matrix and do the inverse on your calculator. But I didn't, since it was just two equations and two variables, I went ahead and solved it by hand on number 14. So I'm going to do it by hand with you and I got negative 5x plus 3y equals 8. And 3x minus 6y equals negative 30. I looked here and I, I knew that since this one was a 6y, I could just multiply the top one by 2 and also have a 6y. So that got me negative 10x plus 6y equals 16. The bottom one already had a 6y, so I didn't mess with it. A 6y are different signs, so I'm adding negative 10x plus 3 is negative 7x. 6y, name 6y is nothing. Uh, 16 and 30 is, that's supposed to be a negative 30, isn't it? I write the problem down wrong? Yeah, it's supposed to be negative 30. 16 and negative 30 is negative 14. Divide by negative 7. And x is 2. Uh, only one of them's got that. It's got to be 8. Alright, it's 15. You, you could do it several different ways. It says tell me tell how many solutions it has. Do not actually solve. You could go ahead and solve it. Even though it says don't, you could solve it and see if it's got infinite, no solution, or one solution. Um, if I look to see if they're the same line or not, that second line that's got the fraction, what I would do on it is I'd multiply that whole thing by 3, cancel those fractions out to start with. So. Divided by the zero, yeah. 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 yeah, that would, yeah. Mm -hmm. What Kelsey is talking about it is she's doing it the same way I'm doing it but opposite. I'm getting rid of the fraction and, and she's doing the first one in the fraction. So it doesn't matter on that either way. Alright, so now I've got, this is my new second equation here. Which my first one, where did it go? 3x minus 9y equals 6. So let me get this, move this negative, move this x over. So this would be negative x plus 3y equals negative 2. So now I'm comparing these two things. That one's got a 3x. If I wanted to make this one a 3x, I'd have to multiply the whole thing by negative 3. 3x, check. Negative 3 times 3y is negative 9y, check. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, check. So it is infinite many solutions. Okay. It, it would if it was not the same line at all. If there were no corresponding spots on it at all. It'd be one solution. Mm -hmm. well, how about no solution? No solution. It would end up like this part and this part the same, but then the answer part different. Okay. Thank you. Sixteen, seventeen. I did both of those on the calculator. What did y'all get on sixteen? Did y'all say different answers then? No. Oh, B. B is correct. B is in Boomland. What about seventeen? D is in Dynamite. 
Any, you need to see either one of those. I feel like y'all can get those on your calculator pretty good. All right, 18. You could do it on your calculator also. I, two by twos, though, I don't. I, I feel like I can work those pretty good. I just use the calculator on the three by threes because they take so long. It saves me a little bit of time. So I did this one. Uh, I made the X's both be 14s. So I had to multiply that whole first equation by 14. They got me 14X plus 42Y equals negative 112. The bottom one already had a 14X, so I didn't mess with it. Subtracting, because my 14X's are the same signs, that's nothing. 42 minus 4, that got me 38Y. Negative 112 minus 2 is negative 114. Divided by 38. That got me y is negative 3. And there's only one of those. Had to be 8. Alright, 19, it asks for determinant again. And we talked about how to do that on our calculator. I told you the day I showed you determinant earlier that when it's a 2 by 2, I can about do that faster than my calculator can. You can still type it in there and it's fine. But a 2 by 2, all you got to do is multiply diagonals and subtract. 7 times 9 is 63. Eight. 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract on that. That is 18. Okay, you'd get the same thing if you let your calculator do it. But remember, I don't, I don't know if you remember or not, but I showed you the reason I don't do a 3 by 3 matrix on my calculator or determinant. Yeah, it's got a loop like crazy. You got to get a diagonal here. And then you got to get a diagonal here, and then you got to get a diagonal here, and then you got to go the other way, and I can't keep up with it all. So, it's craziness. All right, last page. Oh, we got another matrix, a determinant on 20. Determinant again, do that two by two real quick, negative seven, negative one, negative 2, negative 7. So that's 49 minus 2. So that will be 47 for number 20. All right, 21. We got y equals 4 thirds x. And then I got 4x minus 6y equals negative 1. Direction say solve by substitution, and I did use substitution on this because that first one's already solved for y. So I'm going to take 4 thirds x and plug it in there for that y. So I'm going to have 4x minus 6 times 4 thirds x equals negative 1. 6 times 4 thirds is really pretty easy because the 6 over 3 is 2, so then 4 times 2 is 8. So you got 4x minus 8x equals negative 1. 4x minus 8x it's negative 4x divided by negative 4, and x is a quarter. A and C both have that. So I do have to actually finally plug it back in. Uh, y equals 4 thirds times 1 fourth. Right? Plugged it in that first one. So that's y equals 1 third, which is 8. Okay, 22 wanted you to find the inverse, so you know how to, to do that on your calculator. What you anybody get that far? What'd you get on 22? B, good job. 23. Determinant again. Whoops, wrong button. Determinant again. Uh, negative 10, 0, 7, 3. So that's negative 30 minus 0. This will be negative 30. the last two? What you get on 24? D. D. Good job, Mr. Harklaw. Last one? C. C is correct. You need to see either of those two last ones. I feel like you'll type them in your calculator so that'll be fine. Good job.
All right, any problems or questions on anything? Am I good or am I going to eat them all?